Hey, 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 everyone. My name is Rabbit, and thank you for joining me for yet another episode of our semi-blind run in Hoshigami Ruining Blue Earth. In our previous video, we finally made it to the Ixian Temple, and while we were taking a peek around the outside and trying to determine where the entrance was, we suddenly were rushed by a bunch of guards and those weird, mystical, shadow-like knights. We took them down, even as just six, because I might have made the mistake of not putting tin on the battlefield i know i know i know what the fuck rabbits we're almost at the end and you fucking forgot to put a person in your party i know you guys i don't know what to say other than we still were victorious got both of the hidden items and killed all the enemies fairly easily so not too much really was wasted there so now we are ready to just let faz speak and he is saying i wonder where the entrance is i have a feeling if we just approach it oh yeah there we go I guess there's only one way to find out. Bing, bang, boom, everyone. We were outside where these knights are standing guard, but they were no match for us. And now, here we are, friends. Woohoo, woohoo. We did get some equipment. So just to check it out, we got a circlet. Isn't it? Is it not? Okay, here it is. Oh, so it's four hair ornaments with six gems of different colors so that is not for you i'm guessing hmm, defense goes up i don't know if that's better than the veil of lights what ah uh, ah uh, yeah i it's okay but i i really i don't know if i like that at all I don't think the physical defense boost is worth the drop to coin five attack and the increase to weight. That's ridiculous. All right, fuck that. We got a bow. I think it's called the dancing bee, but we don't have anyone that wields bows. So the other thing we got is rise and shine. Learn skill sleep guard. Really doesn't make a difference at all to anyone. Not in the position to switch them out anyway. I think everything we've got is as good as it comes. So let's end organization and move forward. And I will remember to actually put tin down. I don't know why I keep saying remember. That is not technically correct. I remember to put everyone down, but I neglected to make sure I pressed the button before moving forward into the Ixian temple, or I guess the outside of the Ixian temple's fight. Y'all, it's a struggle. We're getting so close to the end and maybe my body, even though spiritually and mentally I'm very sad about it i think my mind is just like rabbit it's fine we're almost there let's just hunker down and see it through and that we shall do mind and body that we shall do first order of business y'all you know what we gotta do scope out the ground terrain for in a sparklies fortunately there's one literally right in front of us is there going to be another one? If there is and it's all the way back here, I am not. What even is this? This is a little bit of a troll map. I, What the fuck? It's all the way up here. I, mm, I don't think so, you guys. I really. It's not even that the enemies are going to be a problem because they're nuts. But I don't really. I don't really care that much. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. As we get closer and closer to the end, I just don't care that much. So we'll move up just enough to start making people run towards us. I'm guessing that's what they're going to do anyway. They might not. I've seen in a couple other areas where they kind of just chillax and skip their own turns. Has, I almost feel like you moving forward is not even as big of a deal anymore. Should have definitely had him become a follower of Ima. Fuck my life. That was like 74%. Are you kidding me? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. But we got it, so not a waste of Leia's turn. I need to have her at the front too. I just worry about Faz in particular. But are they running away? What? 
I don't even have words. What fucking pussies? So Belunga is going to be best. But as long as we don't use Zenith or Ema, we should be fine. Except for the little grass patches. Okay, it doesn't really matter. I guess let's just use Lyneed. As long as I get all of them, I really, I can't see. I wish it would let you rotate. If I put it here, I don't know if it, oh, it does still get them. Okay, fabulous, fabulous. So my dear friends, how are all of you doing? I kind of drolled on a bit in our last episode about how I am feeling pretty confident about what will be taking Hoshigami's place in my LP lineup. So I'm very excited about that. It's going to be a new journey for all of us and one that I greatly look forward to. I don't know, maybe this makes me such a schmuck, but I just, I really love playing through video games. And it's fascinating for me anyway to think that you know as a kid the community gaming that you know we did in my household where it would be my brother myself my sister and my dad all gathered together around like a tiny tv playing games and talking about them i guess even in those moments i never thought about what made this the experience so fulfilling for me and it wasn't just the game itself or the games themselves if we were playing multiple things in one day what really makes the experience for me i think is having that sense of community and having people to laugh with you or to talk about things that are going on and to share ideas about how to do something or you know comparing it to other games and getting recommendations for other things to play i just genuinely feel at least for me gaming holds so much value when the experience is being shared. It's just so wonderful. So even though I love playing a lot of these games, you know, on my own, and I have played a few of them on my own as a kiddo, or, you know, as recently as my undergrad playing through some other games again, like Final Fantasy VIII, for example, I played not that long ago. It's not on the same level as like, as like this, for example, I guess, if I can just quickly grab it grab an example out of midair I haven't played this since my brother and I had dabbled in it or actually I don't think that's true I think I did mess around a little bit with this at some point but I don't think I tried to actively play through it I don't know it's hard to keep track but the point is there are some games that I genuinely hadn't played since childhood or like preteen age and then there are games that you know, I I messed with a, a bit, just a bit, a couple years back, like five to ten years ago. So I know, guys, even saying five to ten years ago, it's like, oh my god, that that seems that seems like it's a long time ago, but when you think about it, I was 19 ten years ago, like a fresh 19, but even still, it's crazy to think that it wasn't that long ago that I was a fresh face undergrad student just trying to make it through and do what I could do to get where I wanted to be. It feels like it has gone by insanely fast. So for those of you who are a bit younger, I'm telling you, you hear people say like, you don't want to grow up too fast. And then you think, oh, fuck you. I can't wait to be an adult and I can't wait to be independent. And I don't necessarily hate being 29. Like I I don't know, I just don't have that much vanity and for me it's all a number and it's ultimately just about are you happy with choices that you've made and are you happy with the direction that you're moving in? Because there are people you can be, or they can be, or you can be, I guess, however you want to internalize this, if you even want to internalize it, that can be 22 and miserable because life isn't going as expected. Similarly, you can be fucking 40. It's your 40th birthday and you wanted to have a big family and you're on like baby number four or you know you wanted to be the head of a company and you just got that promotion like i don't think age to a certain extent bears as much weight as vain narcissistic people want you to believe it does like yes there is some truth to the fact that you know quality of life is naturally going to diminish with age you can't get past that your vision's going to start to go and i say this is someone who had 2020 for her whole life and I'm now noticing that things are a little bit blurrier <laughs> than they used to be just in one eye but 
you know, you can't maintain the perfection of youth forever, which is unfortunate. <laughs> but something that I think can remain the same is just your your grit, that determination, and that spirit that you have to achieve your dreams or just live a quiet life even. I think that more so than anything else for me, my goal has always been to just be happy, to be with people that love me. So I was able to achieve that just through my marriage. And I feel like my sister Bear and I, you know, even though we're about three years apart and we're different in a lot of ways, but I think we are close in a lot of other ways too. I mean, we talk almost every single day, even if it's just a text message just to say, hey, how you doing? Hope everything's fine and dandy. You know, we still try to set aside time Hmm, I don't know if we need to necessarily heal up yet, but at the same time, you know what? I will just go ahead and heal. Can I get... No. What if I put it here? What if I put it here? Here. Well, then Faz doesn't get it. Whatever, you guys. I don't think it matters. I don't know if Elena has even taken any damage, so probably not worth me stressing too much about. Just need to get a couple of heals off and to not totally waste Faz's turn. Beautiful, beautiful, B-E-A, beautiful. So I think just in my marriage and my relationship with my sister, I was able to achieve a huge piece of what I always wanted to do, and that was to have a family, you know, with wherever Andrew and I are moving next, even though we're about 99% sure North Carolina is going to be the choice since Andrew got a fairly nice offer from them for his, his program. I just think it's going to have a lot of wonderful opportunities for him. I know that the university is hiring or they're going to start looking at hiring for positions for the fall. So, you know, maybe I will teach for the same school or even if it's just in a different department, which it would have to be. Andrew and I do not come from anywhere near the same educational backgrounds, not even close. Or even just something like academic advising. I don't know. But I feel like it's going to be a fresh start and it sucks in a sense because I am sick of moving you guys know my thoughts and feelings on that that I just I'm not loving that my life has been as nomadic as you know history has been for me but with that being said I'm happy to make some sacrifices for him to take another step towards his ultimate goal, and that's to be a professor. So him going into a doctoral program that's going to bring him more satisfaction, that's more important to me than sitting in a comfortable spot for myself. So I don't know. I'm hoping that good things are ahead, and I'm hoping for me personally that the next steps will involve children as well. I've been saying this, I feel like, for the last year especially, that I'm very much wanting to start family planning, even if we don't start having kids for one more year. But y'all, I'm 29 now, and I really, not that there's anything wrong with it, but I don't really want to be like 33 and just getting started. I think for me personally, it's going to be better if I at least have one by the time I'm 33, and then maybe have the second or third in the next two or three years following that. I mean, you guys already know, if I had had things totally my way, <laughs> and if I had never met Andrew and life had taken just a completely different turn for me than what has been this path, I would have probably had like five kids right now just because I love children so much and I've always wanted to be a mom and just give them the love and support and encouragement that I really think would have been great if my siblings and I had had fully from all parties involved in our early life. But you know, you can only do so much and you can only work with the cards that were dealt to you. And so I'm just gonna do that and whatever happens, happens. I think it's the day-to-day -day living that I like to try to focus on instead of getting weighed too heavily down by, oh, but I really wanna do this or what if that or blah 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 it's just it's a trap y'all it's such a trap to keep you from being satisfied and happy with where you are to compare yourself to others or to compare yourself to these imaginary circumstances that might have been but very well might not have been you know i just i think in general people 
need to just look at things as they are, not as they wish they were. And if it is a case that, you know, things are just completely out of control and not, not the direction you were hoping it would go in, I think then you need to look at what choices you made that led you in a different direction and how can you adjust accordingly so that you are back on track. I think that's a better way of looking at it than, oh no, nothing worked out like I wanted it to and it's too late, woe is me, blah, blah, blah. Just don't be defeated so early. Life is shorter than people really give it credit for. I think, at least for me anyway, things have fucking blown by. But that's what they always say. And you know, you don't want to believe it as a teenager, especially because you're so eager to be grown and to do your own thing. But y'all, it's a trap. It is a trap also to want things to change so significantly and so rapidly. All right, don't mind me, friends. I am just trying to encourage them to come closer to me. Oh, come on. Please, Faz. Hit this bitch for 56% and nothing. I guess that was a risk I probably didn't need to take anyway. But okay. I'm just going to move down one and see why won't you guys come forward. They're not going to do it. I'm going to have to just run over here and kill everyone. Which, whatever. Ooh, but if I can get them to move a little closer to me. Metalev, my dear Metalev, go forward. Make this gap a little smaller for me, please. Okay. Finally, at least one of them came out. Jeez Louise. Oh, I cannot use Belunga, but that's okay. We can get two for one, hopefully anyway. Irma will dish out the damage we need. So, with all that being shared with you guys, I... I will confess, I'm sad that Andrew and I will be leaving Wisconsin, especially because we haven't even been here for two years. It's a little bit insane that already we're planning our next big move, and it's it's going to be like 11 hours from where we are now, so it's not even like we're just moving one state over. We seem to be drawn to moves that are somewhat cross-country, but you know, now's the time to do it, right? I think... If ever you're going to get out of your comfort zone and experience things, it probably should be while you are young and you don't have kids. Cause I think, especially for me anyway, reflecting on my life, I didn't super love that we were constantly moving. I just felt like I wasn't able to establish a lot of roots or truly feel like part of a community as a child because we were just always bebopping around and always somewhere else, which... There's not anything, I guess, technically wrong with it. And my father did the best that he could with what he was given. And honestly, we just had to go with the flow and it worked out fine. I feel like my relationship with him and my siblings was fairly decent as a result of the fact that we kind of only had each other because we were constantly thrust into totally new environments and cultures and things like that. So you kind of had to rely on each other for that comfort. All right, I just need to kill you. I hope this isn't gonna affect you, Tin, but I'm not trying to have this going on any longer. Fuck these guys. One for the money, two for the show. We'll see what'll take him out immediately. Well, I will keep you guys posted as we draw nearer and nearer to the move itself. I'm hoping that we will, or I will be in the position to get a lot recorded over the summer. So here's sort of my tentative plan. I did already hand over my resignation letter to my company that I currently work for. And it's so sad. Like They're really distraught about it. And I know they don't want me to leave. And I don't really want to leave like this. But I'm thinking I'm going to stay with them. Initially, so my company requires at least 30 days, which I think that's more than enough notice on my half behalf anyway because Andrew's stuff isn't technically going to start. I think he needs to be there in August to sign a couple of things and to maybe begin some training because he'll be teaching. But 
yeah, we could leave in June, like the second or third week of June, and I think be totally fine in terms of a timeline. But I don't want to stay with the company until June because I know we're going to want a few weeks of our own to plan things, to maybe fly down ourselves and spend a week looking around at apartments, touring the campus, just seeing what is in store for us. I think most importantly, it will be to check out apartments and get a brief tour of our environments and what our new home is going to be like, especially if Andrew is going to be hunkering down and focusing on this program. We could be there for four years. Like a PhD program, it depends on what you're doing and maybe like how much experience you have going into it and exactly what your end goal is. It's all going to vary, but I've known people that have spent like seven years on their PhD and then others who've only spent three years. So I'd say the average is probably close to four or five years. So we might be in North Carolina for four to five years. So I just want to make sure that we... We're walking into a situation that we're both going to be very comfortable in and feel confident moving into. So with all that being said, even though technically we wouldn't have to, I wouldn't technically need to be done working until probably June itself, I did go ahead and give them eight weeks. I initially told them six, but I'm thinking... And what I was talking with my supervisor about the other day is that eight should be fine. I think, because eight weeks from now will bring me through to the first week of May. Maybe like the end of the first week or the beginning of the second week of May. So let's just say it brings me through to the second week of May. I will then have all of, like three weeks in May and like two weeks in June. So I'll have about five weeks total for us to start packing, start planning, maybe go down to North Carolina for one week. So if you just set aside like three weeks for tying up loose ends, getting things cleaned, you know, picking out your apartment and all that other stuff, then that's going to give me two weeks where I can do just stuff for me. So like the distance job hunting maybe, or I probably can wait till we get there. I'll look and see and maybe submit a few applications, but I don't know if it's that urgent that I like rush, rush myself to, okay, hang on, let me wait a second. I could honestly run up there and get this, but I don't know if I really want to. Can I? I actually could. We're gonna just chill. We're gonna chill for a second. Let me see how close I can get everyone. Just so that when it is Sylphados' time to go and he does everything he needs to do, I can then finish off the enemy fairly quickly. So let me just put one of these up here. Ooh, and I just barely didn't touch Sylphado, so that's really nice. Perfect, perfect. So yes, anyway, I think that that will leave me about two weeks of idle or passive pursuit of employment and most of that two weeks though I think can be spent recording so that should be good news for you guys where I think I'll be able to get a whole lot of content done since the drive there is going to be fairly arduous and I don't know how long it'll be before we have internet and all that good stuff so yeah that is kind of my expectation anyway that there will be maybe a week-long gap between our move and when more videos come out for you all. I know the last time that we moved, it wasn't that long that you guys went without videos. Like, what was it? I think I had done a little bit of pre-recording when we were still in Colorado, and then maybe there were two or three days after we had gotten back that we needed to settle. Because it was over, like, the 4th of July weekend, I'm pretty sure. Yes, because my car, God, I still, this triggers me even just to think about it. My car randomly had a piece break right as we were pulling into the parking lot. And then I was starting my new job that 
Tuesday, I think, after the 4th of July. I think it had fallen on a Monday or something. I can't really remember, but the point is that was insane. So things were crazy, and I had a couple of days, I think, that I just couldn't sit down and record for you all. So there were about three days, I think, that you went without videos. And before that, when we were moving from Arkansas to Colorado, I think it was the same thing. I had Jade Cocoon, the first Jade Cocoon 2 videos that were finishing up. Not Jade Cocoon 2. Jade Cocoon Story of the Tama Mayu. So the first one on the PlayStation 1. I had done a little bit of pre-recording and I think there was a gap of a couple of days from when we had left Arkansas to us settling down in Colorado itself. So anyway, friends, that kind of, you know, ended somewhat easily, probably more so than it... I was even expecting. We were able to just throw Silphados forward and he was able to get, what was it, some sort of ball and chain item that we don't really need. Chains of doom, I guess. Cure sleep. Was that what we just found? I think so. And then a panacea, which the items in this game are total joke. Total joke. I mean, whatever. Good stuff, I guess. But the rest of these are a little bit garbage and have been wholly useless. So anyway, just so that we are not taking up too much time, uh, we were able to knock out that fight, get some heals on people. So I think we're all ready to move forward into our next fight, which will occur in our upcoming episode number 75. So thanks for watching, friends. I am your host, Rabbit, and this is my semi-blind run in Hoshigami Ruining Blue Earth. I'll see you guys very soon.